Welcome to First Class Solutions. We are specialists in B plus E trailer test courses. You can take your B plus E trailer training and test at our DVSA approved test centre in Gull, Yorkshire. The following is an overview of the B plus E trailer test. And after watching this video, if you would like any more information or to book a course, please contact us on the details at the end of the video. So before you start your test, the DVSA examiner will want to see your driving licence to check your details are correct and get you to sign the declaration and do an eyesight check also. Section 1 is show me, tell me questions. You'll be asked several questions during this part by the examiner. These include interior ones, like can you tell me how you would check your head restraint to make sure it's in the best possible position in case of a crash. Can you show me how you can check the part brake for excess wear? Can you please show me how to dismiss the windscreen? Can you put your dip beam on, put your high beam on, tell me how you know it's on in the vehicle and switch it off? Can you put your fog light on for me, tell me how you know it's on in the vehicle and tell me when you would use it? Can you use the horn for me please? Can you clean the windscreen? So these are the interior questions. 15 on the question bank you'll get around 3 to 5 on the show me tell me section. Now moving out onto the outside the exterior questions. So we start off by opening the bonnet. There are several what we class as level checks underneath the bonnet. You'll be asked to identify at least one of these and tell them how you would check it. So one of them could be the brake fluid, one could be the windscreen washer wiper bottle and if it's the engine oil or the radiator coolant you must add that you wouldn't check it when the engine's cold. Oh. Could be a question on the tyres, can you tell me how you can check your tyres to make sure they're in good condition and safe for the road and also make sure can you show me how you can check your doors are secure on vehicle and trailer. There are two questions involving safe loading of the vehicle and one of securing a load on the vehicle. Section 2 is the reverse exercise. You'll be shown a diagram similar to this by the examiner. It'll ask you to pull forward following the blue arrowed line and then do a left and right reverse into the garage area following the red arrowed line. So as you can see the vehicle's moving from the start position towards the two forward cones. The examiner will wave you towards them and get you in the right position and then to, when you're ready he'll tell you to start. This is a forward facing view, a couple of frames just moving towards to showing you the type of view you'll get moving towards the two forward cones. And the frame there shows you the starting position. This clip shows you from the front how to do the left and right reverse. So steady away, nice and slow. Not too much steering. Less speed and less steering is more control in this case. Plenty of mirror checks in both left and right mirrors. And as you can see, he's nice and steady, just getting into the final position, part four, pulling into the garaged area. He's then put in the very rear extreme of the trailer, the furthest part away from him, over the four and a half metre long by metre wide yellow and black hatched box. A different view pulling forward towards the two cut forward cones from the start position 
On the reverse, you must make sure you don't hit, move, or touch any of the cones. At any point, this would be an instant fail. So we're getting nice and steady away. Steering little and often. Anti mirror checks. Just slowing it down slightly with the brake. Just dipping the clutch up and down just to get momentum in behind the trailer. And plenty of control as we pull, pull into the garaged area. And different view from the back. So to give you a rough idea of the technique that we use, when the examiner is giving you the go ahead to start, you've got 10 minutes maximum from start to finish to complete this exercise. So we put on one turn to the right, put up against the headrest, looking in the left hand mirror, waiting for that trailer to get two thirds into that left hand mirror, while constantly putting a left hand steering on. Once we've got the full left hand steering on, we then bring it to a halt one and a half turns to the right and then proceed towards the garaged area steering into the left if the trailer goes into the left and into the right if the trailer goes into the right so when you're in your final position bob yourself out after securing the vehicle and confirm to the examiner if you're happy with the final position just another perspective from a different angle Just to give you an idea of the size of the test area from the very back barrier to the front cones from the barrier to the front of the garaged area is one full length of the train combination then from the front of the garaged area to the middle cone that's another full length and from the middle cone to the forward two cones that is two times the train length so it's four times the train length in total from the front cones through to the back barrier so again, we're going one turn on to the right, over into that left-hand mirror, wait until the trailer gets into that left-hand mirror, putting the constant left-hand steering on. Then we start to look into the right-hand mirror, waiting for at least two cones to appear in that right-hand mirror. Once it does, then we bring it to a halt one and a half turns to the right, then straight back towards the garaged area. Now on this particular example, we're going to show you how you can use your shunts. You're allowed to do two shunts. A third or more shunt forward would be an instant fail as a serious. So as you can see, the guy's going to get stuck behind one of the cones. So then you're going to have a shunt forward. When you shunt him forward, you can do this twice as previously mentioned, a third or more would be a fail. Also, you can't pull any further forward than the two forward cones. That would be a fail because that's your fourth imaginary line. We use as much forward area as we can, as long as we don't go over the yellow line and any further forward than the two cones, we use as much area as possible. So then as you can see, just drop it straight back in with as much accuracy as possible. So section three, the uncouple recouple section. So the examiner will ask you to pull forward to do the uncouple recouple position from your final resting place in your reverse. Once he's pulled you forward, the examiner will ask you to uncouple the vehicle and trailer and then drive the vehicle safely forward and then reverse parallel park it next to the trailer. So as you can see there, when we go around, hand brakes on first thing every time. Jockey wheel down, electrics out and then secured. Then uncouple the trailer. And then very last, as you can see, the breakaway cable comes off. You then stand back and confirm to the examiner that there's enough room 
between the tow hitch and the tow bar so you don't hit it when you come backwards and forwards. But they get in the vehicle, drive it slowly and control forward, and then reverse parallel park it at least a metre this side of the trailer so you can do your walk around checks when you get out. this point you don't have to worry about the yellow lines that's only for the reverse within reason you can pull forward into the clear area and then reverse back and to your mirror checks to make sure there's no obstacles in the way once out the vehicle the examiner is going to ask you to show him the checks you do to the trailer treating it like a new one one you're not familiar with and like you've seen before you must go straight to that handbrake and verbal and physical check you then go around and from top, middle, bottom, skylights, doors and windows are closed, mud guards are secure, wheels and tyres as they should be. Then to the reverse, checking the registration plates there, clean, free of any defects and matches the vehicle it's going on to. Door secure, lights and lenses are clean, free of any defects. And back around to the front just to confirm the handbrake verbally as well. The examiner will then ask you to pull forward in a safe and controlled manner and then reverse up towards the trailer to then recouple it. Now the idea here is to get as close as you can to the trailer without hitting it, just so we can get the breakaway cable on. If you get out and check it and it's not close enough, you are allowed to get in and move it back. The main thing is we don't hit the trailer because that can be a failed dip. That is down to the discretion of the examiner. So once we get out and make sure that we're close enough to get the breakaway cable on. Once the breakaway cable is on, then the handbrake can come off for one reason, one reason only. That's to move the trailer forward over the top of the tow bar. The handbrake must go back on before we start the five parts of recouple. So the very first part of the recouple is to recouple it and then do a physical and verbal three-pointed check. That's making sure that the red or green button's in place and the pin's locked. Physical lift with the handle, but most importantly, as you can see there, winding the jockey wheel down to lift the back of the car up and you must verbally confirm that to the examiner. Once that's done, then the jockey wheel can come up, the electrics can go in, you stand back and make sure, just verbally confirm to the examiner that the breakaway cable and electrics aren't fouling or on the floor. And then you stand back, put the handbrake off, stand back and ask the examiner to go to the back of the trailer and check your brake lights, indicators and lights. If it doesn't go though, that's a hint that you've probably missed something. So section four, the road drive, this is a minimum of 50 minutes. It will be across different environments, different road types, so motorways, dual carriageways, residential and motorways. This is to assess as an already experienced driver that you know the likes of the speed limits, highway code, road traffic law. You must work with other road users and show that you've got a good standard to be safe and controlled on the road. Keep in mind the examiner is there to assess that you are safe for that vehicle and trailer with it being a bigger vehicle and that your forward planning skills are good and you're not leaving it to last minute to change lanes at roundabouts. You're working with other road users, not making them slow, swerve or change direction. And the likes of this on the motorway, when approaching a motorway dual carriageway, that you be forward planning plenty in front, you're not leaving it to last minute on the slip to check that blind spot and also be checking your mirrors well in advance. And if you can't get out in front of a vehicle and don't force it over into the other lane, then you either pull behind it or accelerate in front of it. The main thing is we don't make the other vehicle slow, stop or swerve. On this type of road, on a motorway, remember the national speed limit for both dual carriageway and motorway with pulling a trailer or towing any type of trailer, caravan or horse box would be 60 mile an hour on two and three laned 
dual carriageway or motorways or else otherwise told to do so and you can't use the furthest right hand lane of a motorway. If there are reduced speed limits due to roadworks or if there's a matrix board you must adhere to that or else otherwise told to do so by the examiner. So on residential and rural routes at least 50 minutes to an hour on the road in combination with the all different road types. One of the main things is making sure we're moving away from stationary that we check our blind spot right and left mirrors and we're moving away especially when being asked to pull over at the side of the road where it's safe and convenient to do so around three to five times and again at junctions and roundabouts we're moving away from stationary making sure that we check our blind spots and mirrors. Remembering with your road position you need to be into the central part of the lane as much as possible and when especially taking sharp left hand bends we need to take some of the road up that we're going into. So making sure it's clear and no other traffic and using some of their side of the lane when it's safe and convenient to do so. Because if we take it like a road position like a car we could end up taking the, the left hand curb and that would be a fail if the wheels and tyres go over the curb. So remember when you're on the road, he's not asking you to do anything more than what you did before you came to us. You need to see that you are safe and controlled and know in his mind and com be confident that you are safe and controlled at all points of the test. On the road, don't overthink things because quite often this is one of the biggest worries as an instructor. That you're okay for the first 20 minutes, half an hour, then start overthinking things. Just keep nice and relaxed, don't overthink it. You've not failed until the examiner tells you at the end. So quite often people think they've failed for some minor thing and it isn't a fail, it might be just be a, a minor driving fault. So stay confident, showing competency, showing that you're confident out there and you know what you're doing with that bigger vehicle. And then when you come back to the test centre at the end, the examiner will pull you into the test centre, he'll ask you to park up, make the vehicle secure and then give you your test result at the end. If you are unfortunate enough to fail, then you'll go through the serious marks only and let your instructor go through the minor driving faults. The test is actually now taken on an iPad instead of the old paper-based DL25A test sheet. So I hope this has been of some help. If you'd like more information or want to book in for, for a course with us, please feel free to use the following contact details on the following screens. Thank you for watching.